Have you ever thought about what it would be like to be carbon dioxide? Like everybody's in love with your brother, oxygen, man, oxygen, come on to my party. We love you, oxygen. Carbon dioxide, you are not welcome to the party. You are not invited. I mean, it, I mean that's kind of how I think we look at carbon dioxide. Sadly enough, <laughs> carbon dioxide just gets a bad rap and it shouldn't. Today, I'm gonna give you three reasons why you should be happy to have plenty of carbon dioxide in your body. And then I'm gonna tell you, at the end of this video, I'm gonna tell you one way that you can increase your levels of carbon dioxide to enjoy the benefits that lar a larger amount of CO2 in your bloodstream can give you. The first benefit of carbon dioxide is it's actually something to do with oxygen. You know, everybody loves oxygen. They, they invite them to the party and all this. And maybe you've been inviting oxygen to the party. Lots of people invite oxygen to the party through the mouth. They be, they, they, we call them mouth breathers. They don't breathe through the nose. They just go. <sighs> and, and here's the problem, okay? You know what? They're breathing in an enormous amount of oxygen, but guess what? They can't actually take advantage of that oxygen. Yes, let me tell you this. If you have low levels of CO2 in your bloodstream, you cannot, let me repeat this, you cannot take advantage of the oxygen that's in your bloodstream. If you take, if you do a pulse oximeter on your, your finger, you're gonna notice that you're 95 to 100% oxygenated. Your bloodstream is flowing and it's beautiful and it's got all this oxygen. But here's the problem. Whenever you have low levels of CO2, hemoglobin will not allow that oxygen to be released to your tissues. So you can be sitting there and just be over breathing all day long. You can just sit there and go and just be sitting there and just breathe like that all day long. And you can believe, hey, you know what? It's true, I am putting oxygen into my bloodstream. That is true, but guess what? You're suffocating parts of your body. You're suffocating your brain. You're suffocating your organs because when you have a, a low level of CO2, there's a thing called the Bohr effect. And the Bohr effect causes hemoglobin to bind and it, it won't let go of that oxygen until your, your blood pH, it, it returns to a normal level. And that is the job of CO2. CO2 is required for the release of oxygen into your tissues. Another reason why CO2 is awesome is because it is also a vasodilator. That means when you have elevated levels of CO2 in your blood, when, when you have those higher levels, your blood vessels will open up. So not only are you able to utilize oxygen more effectively, but you're able to have better circulation. In fact, low levels of CO2 are associated with vasoconstriction. And in many cases, you're gonna see vasoconstriction in your brain if you have low levels of CO2. So the good news is, if you have healthy levels of CO2 in your blood, you're going to get blood to all the places where it's needed, and you'll actually be able to deliver oxygen to those places as well. There are studies that show that mouth breathers, people who are typically just chronically low in CO2, they actually show that oftentimes they aren't getting very good circulation in the brain. They show vasoconstriction in the brain and that is affecting the way they think and reason and focus and that's happening all day long. So if you're a mouth breather, stop being a mouth breather. I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about, about that in just a minute. The third reason why CO2 is awesome is actually related to why a lot of people don't like CO2. So let me explain. One of the things that is, is known about CO2 is that it causes us anxiety. I know it sucks to have anxiety. It sucks to feel panicked and yes, it's true. So, so too much CO2, uh, more than you're used to, can make you feel anxious. But here's the thing, okay? So, so follow me here, follow me. If you learn and you train yourself to be able to, to have higher levels of CO2, basically if you can raise your CO2 tolerance, and again, most people are chronically mouth breathers or they're over breathers, so they've reduced their CO2 tolerance. They didn't know they were doing it. You probably didn't know, if, if that's you, you probably did not know that you have reduced your CO2 tolerance, but it did happen. But people who can train themselves to have higher CO2 tolerance 
have been shown to be more resilient to stress. Isn't that cool? So the more CO2 you can tolerate, typically the more anxiety and stress that you can tolerate, okay? And the less anxiety and nervousness you're gonna feel when you're stressed. So it's a great, it's a great way to train yourself to deal with stress actually raising that tolerance. I'm gonna to give you a bonus, okay? I said three, but I'm gonna give you four. When you have a high tolerance for CO2, you get winded slower, and that makes you breathe slower. And when you breathe slower, your heartbeat will be slower. You'll have a lower resting heart rate. Your adrenal glands won't be pumping out adrenaline all the time. And you won't be gassed whenever you get to the flight, like first flight of stairs and huffing and puffing it enhances nearly every aspect of your physiology. And so it's not the jerk that everybody says it was, okay? Everybody's at the party, they said, don't invite carbon dioxide, just bring, bring, yeah, oxygen you can come in, but don't bring carbon dioxide. The reality is if you don't invite CO2, oxygen can't go. If you think about it, I guess in a way, CO2 is oxygen's ride, right? It's like CO2 is like, I'm sorry, oxygen can't come over unless I come over, okay? Or maybe it's like this. Maybe it's like oxygen is calling. It's like, yeah, I, I know I'm invited and you don't really like my, my brother, uh, CO2. But here's the thing, he's my ride. He's my ride. I can't really go anywhere unless you invite CO2 along. So yes, we want to oxygenate our cells. We want to uh, make sure that we're, we're giving all of our cells oxygen because oxygen is essential for cellular respiration and all of our energy. It's, it's really good for us to have oxygen. We need it to, to survive and to live. But we have to have CO2 in order to utilize oxygen. Now, you might be saying, okay, uh, I, okay, I need to invite CO2 to my next party. Maybe I can start now. And let me tell you, you can, okay? Now, if you wanna look at, at, at some of my links, I have a book, I have online courses, I do a lot of trainings on how to improve your CO2 tolerance and how to invite CO2 to live happily in your body, to reduce your stress and to improve your performance. But let's just start right now, okay? Right now, I want you to, to make sure you're breathing through your nose. And I want you to breathe through your nose all the time, even when you exercise. And you're like, dude, I can't do that. I mean, when I'm exercising, I have to huff and puff. No, you don't. No, you don't. Yeah, you might get to a level at some extreme level where you have to start breathing through your mouth. But I train athletes all the time and they never believe me. They're always like, Jesse, you know, I, yeah, okay, you can tell me this, but I, I know myself. Eventually I'm gonna be breathing through the nose. Give me a few months and they go whole rounds of, they, they, they roll jujitsu, they, they do sprints, they can do marathons the entire time breathing through their nose. And what this does is it slows down your breathing. It forces you to get a tolerance to CO2. That is the first, and I would, I would even say the biggest step into improving your CO2 tolerance is nasal breathing. And some of you guys are gonna say, hey, you know, I've got sinus issues, I've got um, stuffed up nose, things like that. Do the best you can. And what you're gonna notice is the more you use your nose, the more your nose is going to adapt as well. If you haven't been using your nose very much, it's kind of forgotten how to be a nose. <laughs> it's just the reality. But if you start using your nose more, you're gonna notice that it, it becomes an easier way to get air to your lungs. And that is the first step in creating an environment where, hey, guess what? Oxygen, you're invited. And guess what? I can actually, I can actually utilize that, that, that oxygen in my body and reduce my anxiety because you invited your friend CO2. Okay, so CO2 is good for you. It is a good thing. It is not this toxic substance that, sadly enough, I see people circulating this idea on, on YouTube and, and on social media that CO2, get rid of that toxic CO2. Nah, no, nah, CO2 is your friend. Guys, I hope this has been helpful. Please like and subscribe. And don't forget to go out there and be kind to one another.